Hello and welcome to this episode where I'll be discussing all things body image, um, kind of discussing like the perspectives of body positivity, body neutrality, um, my own experiences over, over COVID and like weight fluctuating and how I've dealt with that and a little bit more about kind of intuitive eating. So when I was researching, um, I found, which is really interesting, that body positivity actually um, originated in the 1960s and it was actually um, the leaders of, of the movement was, was black women and, and for kind of marginalised women as well um, and that was kind of taken over recently by kind of more white women um and kind of influencers such as like Tess Holiday and and I can't I don't know if I'm saying her name right but Cheska King as well um and body positivity basically means you it's all about kind of self-love loving yourself loving your body for what it is and what you do and I think it's been acknowledged recently that that it can be quite exhausting <laughs> like you know I think it's actually quite harmful to have this opinion or this perspective that you should always be positive about your body never like say one bad thing about it um etc etc like I don't I personally don't think that was like its intentions but it's been acknowledged I think by a lot of people that it, it is just exhausting and therefore um body neutrality has kind of come into focus and body neutrality basically means that you like you don't focus on your looks of your body rather you just accept that it does things I don't know if I'm like defining that like perfectly but um you just have it's kind of says it on the tin it's you just have a neutral opinion about your body which I think can be less exhausting and I've personally I like for me personally like I've liked both approaches like I've I've like for me like some days I just don't feel good about my body and I'm just not gonna pour self-love into it and I think a lot of like fashion brands have kind of hijacked body positivity and made it into this like consumerist product which it isn't really and it's kind of become like a marketing ploy by kind of big name fashion brands which I'm not going to name here but yeah I, I obviously I'm trying to make this video into 10 minutes but I will link down kind of the videos and influences that I found helpful that's kind of educated me more on this issue but I guess like with the whole with with the whole covid thing that we just haven't been able to escape um and you know a lot of people have set, have seen like fluctuations within their weight over lockdown um and for me personally like i've seen you know i've always been i'm very much on the slim side of things and i was that really annoying person where you i would just eat loads and there would just be no difference um and i was for, for a long time was trying to gain a little bit more weight than i was and and to be a little bit more of a healthier size because i think everyone everyone knows what their healthy weight is and what they feel is healthy which can be different for different people um but yeah so i just i just found over lockdown like i gained like a lot a lot of weight um and there was actually some there was some like medical reasons behind that but at the time i didn't know why i was gaining all this weight and i was so so hard on myself and i was like well i should be exercising every single day because it's lockdown and i'm not moving and i did go on walks and i did try to be you know i tried to put in like exercise within it and the weight just wasn't going down and I was just like what is going on and like some of the things that's kind of helped me like accept my body and like my weight as it is is that I've been kind of researching and creating my own social media feed I've had a little bit more self-compassion and I've also looked at like the wider context of like the situation of why I'm gaining weight and I'll start off with that is that it is a global pandemic and everyone's super anxious about what's going on and like you are stuck indoors most of the time and also I did say this in um 
the More Than Glad podcast, but you are in your home all the time with the kitchen right by you. You are eating so much more than like you probably think you are like subconsciously. Like I, know, I don't know about you, but I love eating a little bit of crisps, twiglets. I always have a little bit of food on my side. So you are like eating a little bit more then I, like, I personally found I was eating a little bit more than I usually would if I was like out and about, if that makes sense. Um, and be like curating my own feed is that I kind of like, you can kind of block or remove images that you don't like or you find a bit too like sensitive or triggering. This can be really useful if you have significant disordered eating problems or you have an eating disorder. Um, so i've done that with instagram so if there's a pop-up of like an image of like someone super super skinny um eating like a banana a day i just kind of block and i kind of unfollowed a lot of like unhealthy mo not unhealthy models but like models that i found unhealthy because like i was comparing myself to them so i like just deleted and blocked that and that that took a while, let me tell you. Um, and then I just started following a lot of like self-care, body like body neutrality, body positivity people on Instagram. And that was like, a, and I was trying to diversify my feed and I didn't realise that like, I could technically have the power to do that. So I followed a lot of trans women, black women, women who look like me, different sizes, shapes, and it's just like, like in a weird way, like made me realize like so people are so different in their bodies, and everyone looks so good in who like because they're trying to be who they are rather than like trying to fit into this like one ideal that society has told us to be. Um. And I, I forgot the third one that I was going to say, but we're nearly running out of time. But I thought of kind of talking about intuitive eating. And intuitive eating or like mindful eating, as it's also known as, is kind of like this new kind of trend that I've personally been seeing on social media. I mean, it ba basically it states that you should listen to your body and what it needs and wants like if it's really hungry at one point maybe you should eat um and listening to your gut instinct basically and that's uh, that is quite difficult if you haven't normally been like in in touch or intuitive with within yourself because it's hard to distinguish what's like a craving for a late night snack to like if you're actually hungry. And um, I watched this kind of YouTuber doing it for like two weeks or something. And she definitely said it was it was quite difficult. Um, and, but like at the end of it, she did feel a lot more in touch with her gut and, and knowing her hunger cues. Um, and like, I definitely kind of follow that kind of motto and personally like for me like I'm always starving if after dinner for some reason like I'm just still so hungry but I'm like actually like maybe and it's been scientifically proven that if you wait like 20 minutes like that's when your brain associates like kind of connects with your stomach to be like you've you're full you've eaten so I always allow myself just a little bit of time to be like okay like I am full but yes so yeah, so I guess like that's just a little bit of insight into like my journey with like my body and my body image, um, which, you know, still has like a long, long way to go. Um, so, yeah, and I will, I will link down any useful kind of podcasts or influences that I've found that's helped me on my journey to kind of accept who I am and like my body weight. But yes, and also before I kind of leave you so I did promise that I will say three things that's really been helping me in my mental health and one is that I don't know about Android phones I have an iPhone but um it basically gives you downtime um you can select like for example mine's like 10 p.m to 7 a.m of downtime where it like almost blocks your like apps like social media apps so you don't like kind of 
continuously scroll and I found that really really helpful like late at night I find it quite hard to get to sleep um so I, I do that on my phone and I just like if I can't go to sleep I just read for ages and um it just helps me get to sleep a lot better so that's just been one thing that's just been really really helping me um the second thing is also app app related is this app called down dog i got rachel o Lucy president to download it and she got it and she said she loves it and i love it it's so good it's the best yoga app that i've ever used in my life highly highly recommend and i oh i have it here is that i for my birthday i got just a cheap um like watch that helps you like sleep monitor your like sleep walking and stuff and I find it really really useful like if I'm in a really grouchy mood and like I've noticed that actually I've only gotten seven hours sleep rather than eight then I realize okay that's probably why I'm in a grouchy mood so yeah so those are the three things that's been helping me and I will see you next episode bye